welcome back everyone common ground world has added a new production chain and that would be furniture and the first piece of furniture we'll be making for the upcoming competition happening on april 16 2024 will be the red lamp so that competition features the red lamp meta which brings back an item that i haven't seen in over a year and that would be red steel so the concept of red steel is you make steel you make strawberries and then you dye the steel red yeah it's a strange concept so we saw a red steel competition sometime in 2023 but shortly after that we never saw red steel again because whenever the game transitions from the play canvas engine to the godot engine which is the game engine we play in now the item was not added back until now the item has finally been added back and instead of just making red steel we're taking it up a notch and making red lamps which require red steel and some other items despite that it doesn't feel too difficult to make these red lamps at least in my opinion so what i'm gonna do now is go over all the details for this upcoming competition and then i have a build showcase prepared to give you an idea on how to create a competitive design for this competition as always you can find the official details on the gala games discord and you can find an invite link to the gala games discord in the description of the video so the competition begins on april 16 2024 and it ends three days later meta is to sell red lamps trade time is 60 seconds and one gasoline per trade biome will be a forest biome that includes an oil seep and the biome edges is a mountain on the north and east sides, a river on the south side, and a desert on the west side. So this is what the starter biome looks like. You can see the oil seep is closer to that mountain on the north side. It is a bit of an odd spot. The desert edge is very important because you will need to make silica for this meta in order to make molten glass, in order to make lights, which is one of the requirements for the red lamp. And what the desert edge does is that it provides up to three passive sandy. Well, it provides three sandy to the tile right next to it and then two passive sandy to the row following that one and then one passive sandy to that third row away from it so what passive sandy is doing is that it provides a positive impact to sand mines which are the ones that trap silica so you would want to have your sand mines right next to that desert edge in order to craft silica as fast as possible so taking a look at the starting biome here you are starting off with two panner houses two copper panning sites an ore storage and a warehouse so you can immediately start making copper ore not copper just copper ore we are missing the forge here doesn't seem like you start off with a forge so if you wanted to start making something of higher value you would want to make a forge right Right away so you can at least start making some copper and it should be pretty easy to do that because of all these ponds so what you could do is sell off all the ponds and that should get you enough cash to first of all start off energy production because you will need to make energy in order to build the forge so you would want to build a wind turbine and a worker house thankfully you already have the warehouse to deposit the energy at and then after that you can build a forge which would then let you start making copper now is copper actually the way to go well first of all the cash boost for this competition is copper wire so copper wire is a step above copper in order to make copper wire you will need to make a wire mill that costs a hundred thousand and it will also require a lumber so you'll need money to get started with lumber production copper wire will sell for twelve thousand each it will take some time in order to you know set up the process to get there now is it actually a good idea well i didn't test it out but in my opinion it's viable but maybe not the best idea yeah, i usually tell people to do gold rush because it's much easier to set up and you can easily start off with gold rush here just get rid of those copper panning sites and replace them with gold panning sites and after you build that forge you can start making gold if you do decide that you want to do copper panning sites you will have to collect more cash in order to eventually build the wire mill and make copper wire but the problem is that in order to make copper wire 
wire, you also need energy. So before that, you would probably want to make a power plant that would give you passive energy. That whole setup takes a lot more time to get the cash that you need in order to start efficiently making some copper wire. In my opinion, it would be a better idea to just sell gold to get all the cash that you need for your final design. But if you really wanted to, you probably could do copper wire, but I'm just gonna say gold is probably the better way to go. The rewards for this competition will be the standard gala rewards for the top 1200 placements in the leaderboard. And in addition, to that there will be an nft reward for this competition so the top 1200 places in the leaderboard can receive the crafty art and decor nft blueprint which should reduce the craft time of all of the crafts in the new building called the art and decor shop if you get top 1200 you will receive this nft and you will receive a higher rarity depending on your placement in the leaderboard even if you don't get top 1200 you can still receive the uncommon version of this nft which is the lowest rarity it is at least one way to receive the nft even if you didn't make it to top 1200 and in order to do that you would have to sell at least 100 red lamps so throughout the entire course of the competition just sell 100 red lamps even if you didn't make it to top 1200 you will still receive the nft reward since red lamps is the meta it will give you 100 000 stars for each one that you sell the red lamp is crafted in the art and decor shop and requires one red steel one steel two lights and two copper wire and the craft time is 120 seconds the new NFT that was introduced with this competition is called the Sandcastle, which is an epic rarity NFT. Whenever this NFT is placed down, it provides up to three passive sandy. So the tiles right next to that sandcastle have that three sandy that is required in order to make the sand mines craft silica at the fastest craft timer possible. In addition to this passive sandy utility, it also provides a 10% faster movement speed to all of the worker houses and forklifts. Whenever I say worker houses, it's those industrial workers that are in charge of picking things up like energy or silica from the sand mine. So it will make those a little bit faster regardless of wherever you place down the sand castle. So that would be a global movement speed bonus of 10% for just those workers. So this sand castle is available in the Gala Game store. It costs $300 each and there's a supply of 800. It doesn't cast any other negative proximity effects and it doesn't require a road of course it looks very cool as usual in my opinion this nft doesn't really provide that much utility in very many scenarios so even in this competition we are given that desert edge that provides the passive sandy that would allow us to have sand mines crafting silica on the fastest craft time anyway so this NFT doesn't really provide any benefit over that other than the 10% faster movement speed to the forklifts, but that's really not that big of an advantage if you think about it. Sure, it would let you get by with some kind of different setup. Like maybe you have you don't want your sand mines right next to that desert edge. Maybe you want your sand mines somewhere else that doesn't normally have passive sandy. So then yes, this NFT would give you some sort of advantage there, of course. But I feel like at least for this biome that we're given for this competition you really don't need that sandcastle now there can be other situations where the sandcastle might be useful but right now i believe that the sandcastle doesn't have enough utility for the price they are trying to sell it for now i'm going to show you my red lamp build showcase there are two different versions of this one that doesn't require any nfts and the other one that will require the town hall nft in order to improve the wood production rate which would help improve the lumber production rate which would help improve the red lamp production rate this is the one that doesn't require any nfts and the production rate for this is a little over nine red lamps per hour it is probably possible to get 9.5 if you were to balance the lumber a little better so i've had this running for over a day so for sure it makes at least nine red lamps per hour i'm going to scroll through the production monitor and the reason that it is 
is overproducing red steel like it's making 9.6 as you can see here and only making 9.1 red lamps per hour is because that it's not producing enough molten glass and that's because it's not producing enough limestone so limestone is having a bit of an issue you know making enough of it and that probably has to do with not getting enough wood therefore not getting enough lumber for that specific mine it is possible that i could you know mess with the mines a little bit and try to balance it better but the way it's set up right now it is going to make nine red lamps per hour what i'm going to show you next is a clip that i took of the other version of the build and that one is utilizing the town hall which you can see at the top right corner and it also requires two more mines making iron and two more water facilities or three more water facilities making water drums and that gives you the extra amount of materials required to make up the 10 red laps per hour the reason that works is because the town hall nft provides a 10 percent reduced craft time to all of the tree farms so you're essentially increasing your wood production rate and therefore increasing your lumber production rates i'll have both versions available on the visualizer but for this video i'll be showcasing all of the crafting processes made in the no nft required version of the red lamp build i'm going to start by explaining the lumber production so there's 19 logger houses and all of those loggers are in charge of collecting wood from the tree farms and taking them to the lumber mills to craft lumber. There are 40 tree farms. Two of them are being affected by one shade so they're slowed down but the other 38 are crafting wood at the fastest craft times. And there are 11 lumber mills all crafting lumber and they all have the passive energy and water drums that they need. And then the lumber is deposited in the closest lumber yard of which I have three of them one lumber yard on the west one on the north and one on the east so they are all on a different area so that the lumber mills can deposit the lumber in, in the lumber yard that is closest to them and the lumber yards are close to a different section of mines so that the mines can go and pick up the lumber to the one that's closest to them which is more efficient so now to explain iron chromium and limestone production there are 18 water facilities all making water drums they all have the three passive water that they need. Remember that the water facilities do not cast any shade, so it's very convenient to have them closer to the tree farms. If you are going to utilize the version that requires the town hall NFT, then you want two or three more water facilities to make a little bit more water drums. For the energy for the mines, I am using nine power plants spread around all over the place, and this gives me all the passive energy required for all of the mines mines there are 21 mines or 23 if you were to utilize the town hall nft to increase the production rate of iron and of those 21 mines 15 are making iron four are making chromium and two are making limestone the mines making chromium are these two over here these two and the mines making limestone are these two. The mines making iron only require one energy, one water drum, one lumber, and the mines making limestone and chromium require three energy, two water drum, and one lumber. They do have to pick up that lumber from the lumber yards and the water drums from the nearby warehouses. In addition to the water drums, iron, chromium, and limestone are also deposited in the warehouses and there are a total of four warehouses. Next is steel and red steel production. So there are seven steel mills in total. They all have the five passive energy that they need but they will have to pick water drums from the warehouses. Some of them have two passive water drums. Most of the other ones have one passive water drum since they do require a water pump touching them in order to build in the first place, just like the power plants. This steel mill on the east side is the one making red steel. All the other six steel mills are making regular steel. For red steel specifically, it also requires strawberries. So I have one tractor and two strawberry fields and they'll pick up the strawberry fields and take them to the one silo that is 
facing the steel mill. I think it is important to mention that both of these are rotated so they are facing each other. Otherwise, it would take a long time to make 14 trips in order to get all of those strawberries. So it is important that it is facing each other. And on another note for the strawberry fields, these are not negatively impacted by shade. That's why I have them close to the buildings and closer to the east mountain. And since I haven't mentioned it, don't forget that the mountains do cast up to five shade. That's why you want to have your crops farther away from them. Now to explain molten glass and lights production. So starting off, you will need to craft silica at a sand mine and you need one forklift in order to pick up the silica from the sand mine. So there are two sand mines. Both of them have the two passive energy that they need in order to craft silica. Silica is being crafted at the fastest craft timer possible because it has that three passive sandy from being right next to that desert edge and that is stored in the warehouse and then we have four glass factories all of them making molten glass and the molten glass is then used to craft lights at the north pole creation lab of which i only have one of those that one also requires three energy but it does have the three passive energy from the power plants here and that's how to make molten glass and lights finally the last two steps is making copper wire and the red lamps so i've explained all the items to make red lamps with the exception of copper wire copper wire first requires one panner bunkhouse and that comes with two panner workers to pick up copper ore from the copper panning sites there are two copper panning sites right here they take that copper ore to this ore storage right here which is across from the one forge that i have crafting copper and then that copper is used at this wire mill making copper wire the wire mill does have the one passive energy that it needs from a nearby power plant and that is more than enough to make all of the copper wire that I need for all of the red lamps that I am making and I only have the one art and decor shop making red lamps for gasoline I have an unusual setup for the gasoline production because I do have two refineries this one making petroleum and it does have the passive crude oil from the oil sleep so I don't have to make any oil pumps and gather crude oil that way and then I have the refinery right here making gas so it does have the two passive wire water drums that it requires from the water pumps and it does have the passive energy that it needs however it is not next to the power plants it is actually gathering energy from all four of these power plants or i believe it actually only needs three of them yeah, it only needs three of these power plants to get the six passive energy that it needs to make gasoline so although the power plants are right next to it they are around it and then the fuel storage is across from the refinery making gasoline that way it never gets jammed up by petroleum. For the trade setup, I have two vehicles. I have a trade depot on the northwest corner, and then I have a trade pier on the southeast corner, just in case I need to sell two different items within the same minute. Otherwise, I think you can get by with only one. Better safe than sorry, and utilize two. Here's what auto trade looks like. I have just about everything on here with a trade amount of 10, with the exception of water drums. I do have those at an auto trade amount of 15. Here's what the build looks like on the visualizer. Total cost is 20.7 million cash. Wages are 21,440 per minute. You will have no issue with the wages once you are making and selling the red lamps. I'm now going to show you the version that requires the town hall. So you can see the town hall NFT is utilized it on the top right corner. It also utilizes two more mines and about three more water facilities. Here is the total cost. It is 20. 8 million cash wages are 21,790 per minute you can adjust the stage by going to build manager and then just clicking on the stage that you want to select to get a better look at it and you can find the file for this visualizer on my discord server and an invite link to my discord server is in the description of the video that's all i have for this build showcase so i hope you found this helpful or informative please leave a like consider leaving a comment maybe subscribe as well if you haven't done so if you want to find ways to help support me you can find links in the description of the video as always i appreciate your support and thank you for watching